Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a, another lantern in the collection to showcase. This is one that you guys voted for um, in the community poll that was put up last video. There will also be one put up at the end of this video so you can go and vote on what you want the next video to be about. This is an Alpha 9. Um, more specifically, I think it's an Atlas example based on a few key details that are around this lantern on the inside. Although it doesn't actually have any branding on it anywhere, it doesn't say Thorn, there's no sticker. All I can do really is take the clues around the lantern to estimate its age and guess who made it. Um, and I think it's an Atlas example, just based on what I can find around the lantern, although a lot of you are more knowledgeable than me on this sort of thing. It's in very good condition, this one. Canopy has cleaned up lovely. I don't know what that is. I think that's grease. I think that's um, grease from... Uh trying to sort out screws. I cleaned it up yesterday as well, um, which is when I made the discovery that this may be an Atlas example. Because when I got it, um, I didn't realize I'd just put it on the shelf up there and forgot about it. I thought I'd cleaned it up, or at least that's what it says on my website. It says I've cleaned it up, but I didn't. That was a lie. So I don't know where I've got that from. But it was just sitting up there and I, I never cleaned it up. So I think I might have wiped the bowl down and got some of the rust and stuff out of it. It's got a brilliant bowl on it, this. Not many cracks. In fact, I don't think there's any. There's a teeny tiny little micro crack there, and I think that's it. We can take this uh, HL2 photo cell off because this isn't original to the lantern. That's just a cell from my collection that I put on there to make it look a little bit better for the opening shot. The only thing that really needs doing to this is um, a new gasket around the edge here. This one has a 90 watt SOX lamp in. To open this lantern, um, it's really easy. You just pop this clip here lift it up and then you can lift the bowl up this would be a bit easier if it was uh, upside down well i guess it is upside down but you know what i mean bowl down on a column it, it would be a lot easier it's riveted on here is this hinge um, and this is how you take the bowl off then once you've done that it hinges open and you can take the bowl off like that. I need to show this bowl off, so let's put the rest of the lantern um, somewhere for now. Surely that'll be all right. What could go wrong? Anyway, you can see the sort of place that the clip rests in at the back. Again, riveted onto the bowl. You can see how really complete and uh, good this bowl is. This is a really nice bowl. It is made from high impact acrylic and the refractors are Perspex. There's no kind of branding or anything on this bowl at all, really. I've had a really good look, not even on the refractors, there's nothing there. So, the lantern itself. There are two main clues in this lantern that point to it being an Atlas example. We can remove the lamp, first of all. The lamp has a 421 date on it. That means it was installed in April of 2021. As you can see, it's a very tidy example inside. A few bits of uh, paint flaking off here and there. Um, some slight corrosion to the canopy, but with something this old, uh, you're gonna expect that basically. So the two clues that point to this being an Atlas example are this sort of light blue paint on the inside of the canopy. Typically, uh, Thorn versions of this had a white paint or a more grey paint. This one has a sort of lightish blue paint on it. This doesn't really pick up well on camera, although I have seen a picture of one online that has a very similar sort of paint to this and is still a thorn version. So I wonder if there was some overlap at some point with the colour before they started um, putting the white paint in them. And the second clue is that these connectors are ceramic connectors. On the other version that I saw online of this, which had the greyish paint inside, uh, a little bit like this one, can't really tell if it's the same colour or not, it had plastic connectors in. This one has older ceramic connectors. So, with these two factors combined, I can assume that this is an Atlas example. That would date this lantern to the 1970s, um, and that would make it over 50 years old. As you can see, this is a very simple lantern inside. It's very big, it's very wide, and there's a lot of empty space. It's very open, and there's not much of the space inside is actually used. The only thing really to note in here is the lamp holder photocell connection, ceramic blocks, and the lamp support, and the wire clamps here. I have put new wires in this because the old ones, I have actually got them here. As you can see, the old ones really weren't in a good way. 
These are actually orange, I think, but I've put some red ones in there just because they were the closest thing I had that looked to the originals. So we're going to take a look at this end of the lantern now. It has two grub screws for the column. This is a 42 millimeter spigot, which would sit on a bracket. Side entry only for these lanterns. There was never any post top ones made. Oh, the clips got stuck back where it came from. Get off. Right, got ya. Both grub screws do turn. They did require a little bit of persuasion. Um, I have a new trick up my sleeve. Some of this stuff here. I picked it up from Halfords, Halfords Release Spray. I usually rest the lantern like this, spray it on the top of the grub screws like this, let it sit for a couple of hours, depending on the condition of the lantern. If the grub screws are particularly corroded, I will leave it overnight. Then I will flip the lantern over after taking all this stuff off and I will spray some in there as well. Then usually what I'll do is I'll put an Allen key in there and try it, and if that doesn't work, I will tap at it with a hammer until it comes out. So yeah, it, it did require some persuasion to get these free, but they are free. As are all of the screws in this lantern, every single screw is free and um, turning. These uh, ceramic connectors are not branded, as far as I saw. There is some detailing on the bottom of them, I will put some pictures up on screen now. There is also some detailing on the bottom of the lamp holder and on the NEMA socket. I can actually read the NEMA socket. Fisher Car Park Limited, rating 10 amps, 240 volts, Halifax, type L415. There really isn't much more to say about this lantern. That could have been disastrous. So let's get it put back together. It doesn't even really need a tear down because it's pretty self-explanatory how it comes apart. It's just all held together by screws. You take those out and it can come apart. And to be honest, unless you're restoring one of these, you don't really need to take it apart. So we pop the lamp in like this. Notice how the lamp sits at an angle where the base is tilted up in the air. So to get the bowl on, you just hook that back into the hinge and then it closes just like that. And then you just lift the bowl under the clip, make sure the clip sits in this metal part here so it doesn't put any pressure on the uh, acrylic. Push this towards the bowl inwards and then release and the lantern is locked shut. So that is a teardown of the Alpha 9. Very simple lantern. Uh, there was integral versions of this lantern. Although this one is remote geared, um, there was integral ones made. Um, the earlier integral examples featured a much longer spigot section um, and the canopy was slightly larger to accommodate the gear. As well as that, usually the bowl was a much deeper one. Ironically, even with all that open, empty space inside, with the position of the lamp, there really wasn't any sort of place you could realistically put the gear. So um, the geared versions had, again, as I say, a deeper bowl, usually, and the lamp holder bracket was longer so that the lamp sat lower in the bowl and the gear was situated above the lamp. Later geared examples used the same canopy as this one, so the Alpha 9 is a very interesting lantern and it has quite some history. The origins of this lantern can be traced to the BTH Amber and the Alpha 9 has been sold as the AEI Amber originally, followed by the BLI, British Lighting Industries Alpha 9, the Atlas Alpha 9 in the 1970s and the Thorn Alpha 9 in the 1980s to 1990s. Again, without a sticker on this one, it's um, hard to tell who made this one, but given the clues that I've showcased so far, it does appear to be an Atlas example. It may have even carried the Amber name on the sticker, uh, which certainly would have been interested if it ever had a sticker. I'm presuming it did, but even when I got the lantern, there wasn't even sticker residue. There was no remains of a sticker inside, so that thing has been gone for years and years and years and years. The deep, bold versions of these, um, some of them appear to have a yellow tinge to the bowl, which would imply polycarbonate. Although I couldn't find anything online 
to say that they were ever made of polycarbonate. The later versions might have been. So that is the Alpha 9, um, fully deconstructed. Didn't take long, did it? And now it is ready for its warm up. So that was the Atlas Alpha 9. I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to vote on the poll in the community tab for what you want the next video to be on. And I hope you all enjoyed.